Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries on YouTube. I'm Marcus Curtis, Oro Molasses. So this particular breed, it's confusing to some, and I've heard that question, American Molasses, how can American dog be ancient? It's an American Molasses because I brought it back in America. But the dog is from ancient Mesopotamia and Sumer, and that dog was bred for protection. They would protect the village, the people, the animals, and they also were used in healing they're very loving and loyal, and they believed that the saliva, if you put it on the wounds, would heal quicker. And so when you see them with the saliva, it's, it's, that's part of it, it's a healing thing. And there's an old saying of, I'll lick my wounds and be back, that's from that. But going back to the purpose, they're a protection dog. They protect animals, people, and property, and they were really good at it. Some could argue they were the best of all time because they were around for so long. And a lot of the descendants from those dogs are also good protectors. So I wanted to go back and make sure that I brought this, back, this dog back just like they were. To protect people, animals, um, property. And that's what their function is. And to be loving and loyal. And I don't know if I would uh, encourage everybody to let them lick their wounds. Uh, but, but that's what they're for. That's their function. Uh, I've been working on this breed and uh, trying some different things with different people. And uh, a lot of things, I think we're at four generations now. I have American Molasses in Texas, uh, Louisiana, Michigan, Wisconsin, New York, uh, Missouri, all over California. And uh, getting ready to, well, we have Canada now, so things are going good. Hard to believe that it's seven and a half, eight years ago. Um, but. It's, it's gone exactly how I wanted it to go, but faster than I anticipated. Um, I think the biggest thing for me, like I mentioned in past videos, is just having a vision, having it written down, and having that goal of what I wanted it to be um, accelerated it. But the, I think the biggest thing that really helped me out was uh, networking and working with a lot of people. I know with a lot of breeders um, coming up, it's been about their bloodline and kind of keeping your bloodline and restricted pedigrees and that kind of thing. But I decided to kind of change it up, work with people, and uh, it's really accelerated the program. And it's, uh, it's been really beneficial to a lot of people. So I'm really proud of where we're at. There's a lot of dogs now. Looking back and visualizing what I thought they would be, most of them right now are pretty darn close. Some of them are a little bigger than what I thought they'd be. Um, the other thing too that I'd still like to fine tune is their temperament. Um, some of them tend to be what, what some people call them as a gentle giant. And they're really not supposed to be that. They are supposed to be love, loving and loyal, but when they're out in public, if somebody comes and approaches them and it's not okay, they should still have fire in them. If somebody or another animal comes on the property, they should have fire in them. So I'd like to fine tune that a little bit. And I think some of them have a little bit too much skin for my liking. They should have skin around the neck for protection, but not necessarily on the arms, under the skirt, or on the face. So there's some th fine tuning, but that's with every breed. No matter how long it goes, you should always be trying to fine tune. But that's probably one of the things I'd like to try to get a little more consistent. Yeah, I wrote the breed standard before they were ever here. I actually, there's no way, in my opinion, for what I do, you shouldn't do anything without a map. You know, if I go get dropped off in a forest somewhere, and if I don't have a map, I'm doomed. So with me, I had a map. Um, the statues showed what they looked like, what was written, told about what they did from their saliva being um, a healing type thing back in Mesopotamia to loose skin around the neck for protection, black brindle color so you can't see them at night, um, having the big, huge, thick body and bone structure 
all of those things, I already knew what it was. So the standard was written and the dogs are right on par with that. Um, I think the structure still could be a little bit bigger. Not necessarily like some people think they're supposed to be lean and athletic and like comparing them to other dogs, but they're their own breed. So they're a bigger, bigger rib cage, bigger structure, bigger bones. I still need to work on that a little bit more, but they're pretty darn close. I mean, I have drawings when we first started that showed what they're supposed to look like. The standard had renderings of what they're supposed to look like. And if you compare the dogs side by side, they're spot on with that, spot on. So I'm really happy with that. There's not a maximum, but there is a limit. Like the males should be about 30 inches at the withers or more, uh, 185 to 200 pounds or more for the males. And then the female is 26 at the withers or more, 165 or more in weight. So they can be bigger, but I'm not trying to go for the Guinness book. And uh, I mean, obviously our dogs have been huge. It's documented, but that's not really the goal. It's just having a consistent, primitive, ancient look that they once were. And I think I hit the mark with that. I've tried to keep track of all of them. If you were to, like you're asking me right now exactly the exact number, I don't know. Um, there's several breeders that have come and gone already as, as any breed goes. Right now there's uh, Ancient Garden Molossus, there's uh, Grizzly Molossus, Red Dirt Molossus, NMA Molossus. There's several breeders out there. We're all part of uh, the American Molossus Kennel Club um, that I started and um, there's several registries now. There's five registries that are involved. So there's a lot of people and then there's a lot of breeders that have different dogs that support us in different ways. So that's going really good. Um, but as far as how many exactly, I'd ha I have it documented. I just can't tell you offhand, but there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of them now since, I mean, it's been, I think, going on five years since the last time we did an interview. And uh, I mean, I've been full steam ahead, full steam. Right now, the first litter is uh, over six years old and we're not having a lot of issues with them. Still young, so we got to find out. We do the DNA testing and the health testing and so far across the board, things have been good. Um, I'm trying to think back. We've had a couple of issues with a few dogs, but nothing that's been in the breed program. Um, it's just one of those things where I would say that it's still too young to know where we're at. Um, if we see something on the DNA or we see something with the dogs that we don't like, obviously we're not gonna breed them um, because it's really important that the breed is healthy. I think right now we're at, last time I checked, we have 18 bloodlines that have been incorporated. So there's a lot of DNA, a lot of uh, diverse gene pool in them, which I think will help, but it's still too early to see. But the one thing for sure is that just like I talk about how they're supposed to look and how their temperament is, health is the thing too. I want these dogs to build average 10 to 12 years. And if they can't do that for me, that's not good enough. And so that's what I'm gonna strive for. You know, that's the goal. And it's written down that way. So I gotta step up and get it. I gotta get it done. Yeah, Sasquatch unfortunately passed away. He had injured his um, elbow and um, we had a surgery, but he died in surgery. So unfortunately I lost Sasquatch and uh, that was really tragic for me, it was hard. And it's been two years now since he's been gone. But his offspring, his sons, daughters, grandchildren, they're all doing really good. And he was healthy up to that point, so, but unfortunately that did happen. So right now uh, we have five registries. Um, there's a USBR, DBR, UBBR, ARBA, ADF. Those are all the recognized registries and we're one generation away to submit for AKC recognition. And I'm pretty excited about that because it's not just me, it's for the breed. The breed had always been there. The bloodline had been there all to this day and to be able to kind of fine tune and filter and go back to the original and have them here and then have them established by the AKC, it's a huge accomplishment for me for the breed and for a lot of people that have supported me. There's a lot of people publicly that have su supported me in the breed. And there's a lot of people behind the scenes that have supported me, um, either with their dogs or the registries. Um, so it's, it's significant, it's, it's huge. And like I said in past videos, I wasn't gonna let this go. I'm not gonna back down, I wanted to make this happen. And we're almost there, I mean, it's gonna happen. 
Uh, the dogs, they eat a lot. They poop a lot and they drool a lot. So it's one of those things where if people want to get these dogs, you got to know. But um, an adult dog can average anywhere from eight to 14 cups of kibble a day. And it depends, you know, because some people feed, like I feed uh, kibble with supplements, but some people mix in a raw diet. Um, they consume a lot. I mean, no matter how you slice and dice it, that's what they do. But I mean, these dogs aren't for everybody anyways, but you know, they definitely eat a lot. So for these, they don't require a lot. Uh, walking and regular exercise, fetch and playing is really good. They do really good in pairs because they like to play and wrestle and all that stuff. But they're not necessarily like some of the other animals like a Connie Corso or a Rottweiler to have uh, more of a prey drive. They need to be exercised. Like if you just leave them in the yard or in your house, it won't be good if you don't exercise them. They're not like that. I mean, I have clients that have like 10 acres and they'll run around and they have the energy to do it. We have one named Chief who jogs five miles a day. Um, but there's some that are actually, believe it or not, they live in condos and they just chill and they're really relaxed. So they're pretty diverse in their lifestyle. So the American molasses, the temperament is dictated by the function. So they were bred to be able to be loving and loyal, which they are. Um, they can be in different situations. So they can be relaxed with you or with children or with other animals. Some of these dogs are with cats. Uh, like at our house, I have multiple cats. I have a pug. There's children around. They're really good in those environments. Um, they can be by themselves, but they ultimately are to defend and protect. So they are weary of strangers, they're alert, and they're lightning fast. So if somebody was to come to the property or an animal is to come to the property that they don't know, I mean, they move and I mean, it is lightning fast and it can be frightening because they're so big and powerful. They're so imposing and the color is so primitive that they're intimidating, that's what they should be. But not necessarily a liability. There's a big difference. These dogs, if somebody comes, they're not gonna crash through a, a gate and go chasing somebody down and just maul them. And they shouldn't be that way. They're more of a defense. So if somebody were to come, the tail goes up, they puff up, they start barking, they go towards them, and then they'll come back and circle around. That's kind of how they don't, it's innate in their character. Even without training, that's how they are naturally and that's how they should be. But you can put them in a situation where they're around kids and other animals. They're not a one owner dog. Um, they're not a hard dog where they're gonna snap or you should be afraid of kids, other than they're really big. I mean, I wouldn't recommend leaving a toddler with them in the yard because they may knock them down or roll them, whatever, but, uh, but that's their temperament. I mean, it's really clear. It's clear in the standard and it's clear by what I tell people what it is. Big, imposing like a giant security guard stay away, not supposed to come in here, and if you test, then they're gonna do what they gotta do. So today we had a good variety of dogs and I wanted it to be that way because we've come so far over the last seven years. So we had uh, Max today who's over six years old. So he's a good representation of where the breed is as they progress. Whereas, you know, six years for large breeds like Great Danes, Neapolitan, Mastiff, St. Bernard's, that's old. Um, for this breed, I like to think that he's older, um, but he's a good representation. We had Monstro here, who's over two years old. Um, we have Nico, who's over two years old. Um, we have uh, a female that's 20 months that was here, that's Hershey. Um, we have uh, two puppies that are from uh, Maximo and Elvira, and they're only 14 weeks old. So it was really good to have them here so you could see variety. I think it's great so you can see the different color variations because the breed I didn't cover that is uh, black, black brindle and brindle. That's the color. And we had a good variety of them here. Also, Easy was here. Uh, he's one years old. So I really love to share a different variety so people can kind of see them in the different stages, how big they are, what to expect with them. And you can also see the size difference in how we've progressed just in that amount of time. For instance, Max, he's really at the breed standard. And then if you look at Nico and um, Monstro, they're way above standard. I mean, they're 250, 260, way over. 
not necessarily a, a, uh, a flaw because they're proportioned right, but it's just one of those things where it shows good variety. And of course, Yeti um, is, he's pretty big for his age too, so. So the future of this breed is to continue where we are. I've gotten so, a lot of consistency as far as the color and the temperament, the size, the build. I don't know about their age limit yet, so I'd say that's probably the one thing I need to push on is I like these dogs to get to 10 to 12 years. And I'll know as they get older where I'm at. If they start getting there, then I'll have to keep selecting dogs to keep that. And if we push past that, that's a plus. And if we fall short of that, just try to look at them and see what I can do to get better. Also, AKC, it's coming up soon. It's gonna happen, that's a big one for me. Um, I don't want the breed to grow fast like some breeds because they're just not for everybody. They're a big dog, a primitive dog, and they're just not for everybody. So just slow and steady pace um, and just cleaning up little things. Like I said, just cleaning up little too much skin, um, making sure that they still have the muscle tone and they're capable of doing what they need to do and, the, and an emphasis on health. Those are the things going into the future that I just want to make sure we do. Um, but I'm really happy with the breed. I'm waiting. I'm ready for you to get one. I'm ready. No, so far. In fact, in this, in this breed, let me just think about it real quick because I follow all of them. One female had hip issues and we didn't breed her yet. And then we just had her as a pet. Um, and the other, we haven't had any, I mean, I know these dogs are huge, but I have not had any issues with that. One thing I think that I am gonna do, because I, I do read the comments, and by the way, you know, thank you to everybody that's been really positive and supporting me. Love you guys for that. Um, but there have been some people that said that I should get their hips certified. And uh, I, I'm all for it. If there's something I can do that people think that would make me a better breeder, things that I could do to improve the breed. Um, that's something that I, I'm gonna be doing. Okay, so I'm Marcus Curtis, Old World Molasses, uh, founder and resurrector of the American Molasses. You can check me out at oldworldmolasses.com, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Old World Molasses.